Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're in South Texas and we're down here to do some hunting. I was down in South Texas earlier in the year hunting a different animal and I was introduced to a species called the Nilgai. The Nilgai is an Indian antelope that was introduced to the South Texas area around 90 years ago. The animal has since become a nuisance species, much like wild pigs have throughout much of the southern United States, and now we're able to hunt them with anything. We can hunt them with semi-automatics, we can hunt them at night, we can hunt them in the daytime, we can hunt them with thermals and night vision and flashlights, and there is no season. The animal's a large animal. It's about the size of a small horse when it's fully grown, but it's also one of the most desirable meats out there, and it's easily one of the best meats I've ever eaten. When I was down on my last hunt, our guide had prepared a meal for us, which I thought was filet mignon. And it was a Neil Guy steak that was wrapped in bacon. I took a few bites and I said, man, where did you get this filet mignon? He goes, it's not filet mignon, it's that thing. And he pointed to a Neil Guy mount on the wall. From that point in that moment, I knew I had to come back down to Texas and get my own Neil Guy, and that's why we're here. It's kind of late, we just got in this morning, it's late now in the evening, we're just getting set up. But tomorrow morning, we're gonna get up bright and early and we're gonna go out looking for my very own Neil Guy. On our first morning out, I sat in a raised blind that was about 15 feet off the ground. This gave me the chance to really get a good look at at least part of the area and the type of terrain I'd be hunting over for the next four days. The terrain here on this ranch in South Texas mostly consists of mesquite trees, various types of prickly pear cacti, and a lot of scrub brush vegetation. From my vantage point, I was able to use my thermals we had on hand from FLIR and see what type of game was out there. Using the Zeus Pro Thermal Rifle Sight, I was able to spot tons of game that were not visible to the naked eye due to either the low light of the morning or because the game was grazing or hiding in the thick mesquite tree line and brush. A couple of Neil guy up there. Saw ya. One big bull. Towards the late morning, we saw two Neil guy off in the distance that was possibly part of a larger herd. However, I didn't have my Falcor Defense Petra 300 Wind Mag as it hadn't arrived in South Texas just yet. At the time, I was equipped with a Falcor Defense Caitlin chambered in 556, which isn't suitable for large game animals such as the Neil guy. While sitting in the blind, I used a combination of thermal optics to look for the game and traditional hunting tools such as my Track Tacoa 10x42 binoculars. If I thought I picked up a heat signature in the distance, I would quickly take a peek with my binoculars to confirm what it was I was looking at. Our morning hunt was used as an opportunity to get an idea of where the Neil guy may be hanging out and where to look for them once I had the Petra rifle. By the time we returned to camp in the late morning, the Petra rifle had arrived. We spent the next few hours sighting in the Petra to make sure my zero was spot on so I could deliver a clean shot on a Neil guy once I found that right bull. After sighting in the Petra, we headed back out for a late afternoon hunt. I planned to stay in the field until I tracked down that bull. I was excited to get back out there and start stalking the Neil guy. Our guide, Leroy of LG Outfitters, decided we should stalk them on foot versus sitting in a stand waiting for them to pass us by. We walked for roughly two miles playing hide and seek with a small herd of Neil guy. It wasn't the cows I was after. I was after the bull and he proved to be quite elusive. We stalked this small group of Neil guy most of the day, but I was never able to get a clean shot on the bull. We did catch a glimpse of a coyote, but I decided not to take the shot as I didn't want to spook any Neil guy that may be in the area. He's over 200. He's about 200. At least he's over 200. Just get him on thermal. Yeah, I got him on thermal. Let's look at it. He's walking away from us. Okay, cool. He stopped. He's looking at us. The hunt was nearing its end for the day when we spotted another small group of Neil guy that were standing just off a jeep trail. We tried to flank them and keep the wind to our face so that they couldn't get a smell of us, but our efforts to cut them off were fruitless. Our hike around the South Texas Ranch gave us a good idea of where we might find our bull in the morning. 
So we headed back to the ranch to eat, get some rest for what was certain to be a long hunt in the morning. The next day, the beautifully warm South Texas weather turned cold, windy, and rainy. We headed out and decided we would first set in a blind on another part of the ranch, which was in a different location from the previous morning. All right, so we're set up in our blind. We've come to a different part of the property. We have a really good vantage point here. I can see three different lanes that are cut from this one window, two of which I can shoot down. Now, even though I have thermals, a lot of times I'll scan with my track binos. Especially when I have enough daylight to really see. So now we're just kind of trying to hope to catch a glimpse of them. We know that they're out here in this brush somewhere right in front of me. Now there's a good chance we won't be able to take the shot from the blind. We may see them again and have to get down and stock them on the ground. If you're lucky, you'll be able to get them from the blind. One thing that's kind of interesting about the Nilgai is that in their home country of India, they're typically hunted by tigers. So that's why they're such hardy animals. Uh, they're really built like tanks to kind of withstand the tiger. So uh, the guys here tell me they've seen them soak up more than one 300 wind mag load. So you really, really have to have very clean shot placement if you want to take them down cleanly. Um, they've told me stories of guys hitting them two, three times and them still wandering off into the brush and having to, you know, track them down and, and find the, the body. I really hope that uh, I'm able to get a clean shot on one today. But I won't take the shot unless I know I have a good, good shot. Hopefully the animal will be broadside to me and I'll wait. If, um, if I'm in a good spot where he doesn't see me, I'm gonna hope that animal gives me a broadside shot so I can actually see where those uh, vitals are and I can put them down cleanly. Everything out here wants to stab you, bite you, sting you. We, even when we come into the blinds in the morning, we have to make sure that the, uh, the wasps are out of here because they'll, um, they'll kind of hang out in here because it's warm. Been putting up with a lot of rain, a lot of rain and cold. Fortunately, the wasps are uh, kind of lethargic because of the cold, so you can, you can kill them pretty quickly. The other thing is, is when it rains, the thermals aren't as, uh, as effective. They don't give as much detail. When something living shows up out there, though, it'll jump right out because it's super warm. But the rain kind of levels the temperature of the vegetation. So normally, like on a, on a sunny day, you'll be able to see leaves and branches and grass and gravel. Uh, after it rains a little bit, all that detail, the ground goes away. But if something warm, something living steps into your field of view, it, it stands out very brightly. There's a cow down about 400 yards. The cows are a little bit different in color. They're brown, it's the males, the bulls, that have all the really beautiful colors on them and those black, almost evil looking spikes. And where there's a cow, there'll be a bull. The morning turned to afternoon, so we decided to walk to a part of the ranch we had seen a lone bull in that morning. <laughs> these things right here, guys, these aren't my friends. This tree that we're under has little stickers. Everything out here has, has barbs on it. And these little cactus are everywhere. When you're out here moving around at night or when you try to take a knee, even the animals that, that you'll find will have these things stuck in their, their skin, but these needles get everywhere and you kneel down and try to take cover or crawl and these darn things are right there to greet you. We don't have those in Indiana. I'll tell you guys, you obviously can track animals by their dung. This is a working ranch. I told you guys that. Primarily, they raise cattle here. 
they do have fences, but they're low fences, and the nail guy jump over them. The dung that I'm kneeling in front of here, this is just regular old cow dung. The nail guy dung is pellets. Imagine uh, rabbit poop, except much bigger. So this is just a standard cow, and the nail dye dung is what, uh, is what we're looking for. Let's go over the gear we're using while we're out hunting on this trip. Let's start off with the rifle. The rifle is a Falcor Defense 300 Win Mag Petra. It's a semi-automatic, basically oversized AR-15. It does use direct gas impingement. This is one of their newer models. This one has the Dracos barrel system on it. I was first introduced to this barrel system at the Big Three event in Daytona, Florida. It uses what's called straight jacket technology. If you're interested in learning more about it, you can Google straight jacket barrel or go by the Falcor Defense website and check out the Dracos barrel system. I've used this technology before on AKs. It's really incredible and the barrel comes with a lifetime warranty, which if you do a little bit of research, you'll see why. Pretty incredible technology. On the end of the barrel, we have a Silencer Co. Omega, which is a 30 caliber suppressor, which is attached via one of their quick detach mounts. On top of the Petra, we have the Armasite Zeus Pro. This is a thermal sight, has a 50 millimeter objective. You've seen it here before on the channel. Back home, I use it primarily to hunt predators like coyotes. Madly in love with thermal sights, and I love going to places like Texas where they're legal for use in hunting. The ammunition we're gonna feed the Petra while we're out here is made by Hornady, and it is a 200 grain, 300 wind mag with their new ELDX bullet. Had very good luck with it, extremely accurate, and again, it really delivers the goods if you're able to connect with the animal. To do some of my spotting without using the thermal, I'm gonna be using some track binoculars or 10 by 42 binoculars. They're extremely affordable. What blows me away though is the optics clarity. Uh, it's a relatively affordable set of binoculars and you should probably Google them and check them out. I've, I've been very happy with the purchase so far. I love them. They're small, they're light, they're rugged. We've had them out in the rain and the cold and they're doing great. Check them out. Now, talking about field gear, we will be taking uh, some essentials, some field essentials out in a backpack. The backpack that the Petra is sitting on is my Kanai pack. And inside of that, we're gonna have all the stuff that we need while we're in the field. Things like water, spare batteries, some cold weather gear like this Kanai pullover, which uh, I'll, I'll layer up as it gets cold because it has been unseasonably cold here in South Texas. We're seeing temperatures dip down into the low 30s. So we'll have all that stuff, sunglasses, even toilet paper, everything we need while we're out in the woods uh, to, to make sure that we have what we need while we're out there to, uh, to keep things going smoothly. So all this together is gonna hopefully mean one very successful hunt. The fence that you see here is meant for cattle. The ranch that we're hunting is just a working ranch. This isn't an exotic game ranch where you come and shoot caged animals. Neil Guy are free roaming animals here in Texas and they're considered a nuisance. This fence again is meant to keep cattle in, but deer and Neil Guy, despite their size, jump over these fences and move out into fields or move into brush. You'll notice how this metal fence is bent and bowed right here. That's usually because the nil guy, which is a big animal, I mean 400 pounds or more, jumps over this fence and they'll catch it and bend it as they go over. The deer can pretty effortlessly bound over these fences, but even the nil guy will jump over them. So I'm gonna see if I can get a clean shot on the bull. That's all rack.
only thing we can see down there, guys, are the cows. The bull's gone. They went back that way. The cows are just hanging out. We haven't spooked them, but the bull walked off behind the trees. I can't get a shot on them. All right, we're gonna have to move. down the fence line. We're gonna see if we can get a vantage point on him and get him. So, we chased this thing a half a mile this morning. He was over here to our right, but we had to get him away from some other animals. He started to move across the field, and Leroy got us right up here using this pole as cover. He didn't see us, he had his butt to us. He turned, gave me a broadside. Nice, clean shot. Put him right down, nice and clean. Man. <sighs> Nothing like it in the world, man. Nothing like that in the world. What'd you think? It's freaking intense, right? I was like, breathe. It's, it's, well, it's, it's a whole thing, man. It's just like, okay, breathe. You know, it's like, <laughs> you just gotta calm yourself down. And, and, cause, and my heartbeat was, like I could see it through the thermal, man. I was like, okay, calm down. He's dead, man, he's, he's still. We're approaching the Neil guy from behind. If he just knocked out, not dead, he has horns and he'll, if he's gonna get up, he's gonna get up and charge forward. So we're gonna come around behind him. He's down. Nerves aren't moving nothing, he's good. Oh, what a beautiful animal. Nice, clean. Nice and clean. Blood. To the, is that from his lungs? That's out the mouth, okay. That's a beautiful animal. Congratulations. Yeah. 
Thank you, man. That is absolutely amazing. Look at the horns on this guy. And this is why you want to be careful when you approach these things. Um, they're not timid creatures. Here's the entry room right here. So just a little clean. This thing is muscle, man. Muscle. Muscle. That neck, oh my goodness. You are gonna taste good. So we've been stalking, not this particular animal, a couple of different bulls. Uh, the weather started going really bad. We've been out here for a couple of days and literally walking miles looking for these creatures. Now, the Neil guy is an Indian antelope. It's not native to South Texas. However, you can hunt them year round and they're considered an exotic animal, but um, they, you can hunt them year round with thermals. They're not varmint, but they play by the same rules, let's say. Uh, this one is about 300 pounds. You can see they have these big horns on them. This guy is about three years old. So in terms of eating, which is why I'm hunting him, uh, this one's gonna taste really good. About three years old, the meat's gonna be nice and clean. If you've, if you've never had a Neil Guy steak, it, it's, it's unbelievable. Absolutely uh, delicious animal and simply beautiful. He's uh, a lot of muscle. There's a lot of meat in this animal. This, once it's butchered, will, will feed my family and probably a few friends for quite some time. Nice clean hit. Bullet came in right here and it put him down cleanly. Uh, he pretty much folded up. These are not easy animals to kill. Sometimes you have to do a quick follow-up shot. If you don't get a clean kill, there's there a lot of muscle and a lot of big bone. And um, we were very fortunate, I was very fortunate that, that I got a nice clean shot on him had a good rest and put him down cleanly so he didn't suffer. And um, man, what a beautiful, beautiful animal. Guided hunts are a lot of fun and I highly recommend going on at least one if you're an avid hunter. When hunting in foreign areas, a well-seasoned guide like Leroy is extremely valuable. Plus, a nice ranch will have nice accommodations to hang out in, eat in, and to have fun recounting the day's hunt with your buddies. Well guys, it's time to tie things up and pack up and head north. I hope you enjoyed coming down to South Texas with me for my first ever Neil Guy hunt. It was quite the adventure. I had a great time and I got the bull of my dreams. The meat's being processed and will be sent home to me in Indiana and I'm really looking forward to that. I hope you guys did enjoy coming along and checking this whole hunt out. If you have any questions though about anything you've seen in this video, of course you can ask those questions down below. I do try to stick around for the first couple of days after a video goes live to answer the questions you guys may have. Also, please swing by and check out Copper Custom if you would like to support the Military Arms Channel. It's the best possible way. And I also want to remind you to swing by and check out Full30.com. That's Full30.com. We've taken all the firearms content creators out there on the web and brought them under one roof and that is Full30.com. Now it's time to hop in the rental van behind me here, head north to Oklahoma for our next adventure. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for all that support over the years, and we'll talk to you guys soon.